So the other day, one of my longtime subscribers who frequents the channel Discord asked me if I'd ever go back to a Star Wars setting for RimWorld. And initially, I was pretty much just outright against the idea. Star Wars has kind of been dead to me for a while, unfortunately. And it is truly unfortunate because it was one of my favorite uh, fictional universes out there, if not my favorite. Um, and so it kind of kills me that I, I just don't have motivation to really do anything Star Wars related. It, it doesn't kind of capture any creativity for me. And that's, that's largely just due to kind of the, the really stale content that's been coming out of that universe for the last like decade or so. It's just, it's very uninspired. And so I'm very uninspired by it. And it's, it's hard when it's something you feel passionate about to see it kind of devolve into that. And it, it almost hurts more than just not having it at all. So that's how I felt about Star Wars for a long time. But um, when he brought that up, I kind of thought more about it. And I, I realized that I shouldn't let this new stuff ruin all the stuff I used to love for me. And, you know, that's going back to things like, of course, the original trilogy. I am a prequels apologist. I I don't even try to defend the, the quality of the prequels necessarily, but I, I love them in spite of their kind of corniness. And I, I think there is a certain campiness to Star Wars that uh, makes it what it is. And the, the prequels have that. And I think that's something that's really lost by a lot of the new stuff. But anyways, let's not get into that. The point being... Games like, you know, Jedi Academy, Knights of the Old Republic, The Old Republic MMO, uh, all the extended universe novels, those are what kind of really captured my imagination, and I wanted to get back to that sort of Star Wars with this playthrough. And so that's what we're going to be doing. We are set in the time of the Old Republic, specifically around the setting where the Old Republic MMO takes place. So we have, I don't remember if it's the Great Hyperspace War, or if it's a different war between the Sith Empire and the Galactic Republic. There's apparently multiple of those. But there is a war happening between Sith Empire, Galactic Republic, and we're potentially going to be caught right in the middle of that. We are in a great purple hell here um, on a outer rim planet. And I'll tell you why in just a moment. Um, I know a lot of people are going to be asking, where is the, the 40k or the Warhammer 40k Let's Play. Why are you bothering with this? You promised us that. Um, hopefully you guys enjoy this in spite of still waiting for that. And I, I promise that's coming. Part of the reason why I wanted to do this playthrough is because the 40k series is going to require a lot of modding on my part, both to get it going and I'm going to basically be continually modding uh, the game while that goes on to add the other stuff uh, I didn't have time to get in before uh, the first episode. And I'm actively recording for that as well. Um, I'm trying to put together a little bit of a cinematic intro for that one, just because it has been so long in the making. And so that's what I'm doing now, but I wanted something to kind of intersperse that with that didn't require any modding effort on my part to put out. Uh, so that's what this is going to be, something where I can just sit down and record. I don't need to worry about adding additional content to the game. Now then, how did we end up here in this sea of purple grass and trees? So... Wade is going to be sort of the centerpiece of the five that we're running with here. So Wade is a Jedi Knight, uh, specifically a Jedi Guardian, if we're going to give him like a, a class. And so Wade was born as a slave, and it wasn't until much later in his life, actually, that he found out that he was force sensitive. And so when it was discovered, he was separated from his wife and child who he had had during his time as a slave and they remained slaves. He was sold off. He was able to escape, ended up going to the Jedi, became a Jedi Knight relatively late in life for, um, you know, what we would typically see from a Jedi. But, uh, because of his aptitude for, uh, physical tasks, he, he was obviously a slave for a while. So he's, he's got some aptitude for those sorts of things. Um, and just being a generally quick learner, he was able to pick it up. And 
after he became a Jedi Knight, he decided to seek out his family that he'd been separated from and rescue them from slavery now that he had the ability to do so. Unfortunately, by the time he found them, his wife had died and only his daughter remained. Luckily, she was still in good health. And as it happened, she was potentially force sensitive too. So he rescued her from her masters with the help of Erina, our smuggler, who we'll introduce in just a bit, and needed to sort of put some space between him and the Jedi Order. The reason for that is because the Jedi Order is not particularly keen on attachment, and so if they found out that he had taken his blood daughter as a Padawan, they might not be so uh, receptive. So he figured, hey, I'll, I'll go off on a mission to set up a Jedi Temple on this Rim world. Nobody's really going to bother us here, and we can just kind of go about our lives in peace while I still fulfill my duties. And so that's how he finds himself here, and also how his daughter Jaina finds himself, herself here. So that's kind of their background. They did meet up with another Force-sensitive along the way. So we have Bassana. What's your last name, Bassana? Kier. Bassana Kier, who is a gray Jedi, if the garb didn't give that away immediately. And she is coming to this planet on a pilgrimage. And because she's a great Jedi, not on the best terms with the Jedi Order, she and Wade got along just fine, and they decided to travel together. Now, she is still a bit of a mystery, but what Wade does know about her is that she seeks to find balance in the Force through nature. So she looks to commune with uh, the spirits or the, the Force that is uh, present in all of the, the, the wildlife, the trees, you know, all the fauna and flora. And the reason she's coming to this plant specifically is because of the anima trees. Now, we have two Republic citizens as well that aren't force sensitive with us. The first being uh, Kestio here, or Theo for short. He's a captain from the Republic military. Um, again, we're not playing during like the later prequel era so the republic soldiers are not clones here they're just soldiers um so theo was rescued from an escape pod after his transport shuttle was destroyed by uh, the sith navy he was one of the few survivors and he was picked up by our group here they decided to bring him along if he was able to link back up with republic forces great if not, then they have a very capable soldier to help protect them on this uh, potentially very harsh rim world. And finally, we have Erina, the smuggler. She is the one that helped Wade and Jaina escape Jaina's masters. And for that reason, Wade is infinitely grateful to her and they have become quite good friends. As far as her background is concerned, she was a smuggler for all of her life, more or less, and she has kind of been in and out of uh, criminal circles for a while. She has some contacts that may or may not pop up later in this playthrough, and that is the introduction to our five. Now, I'll go through their relevant stats and skills as we're playing and they become relevant. I don't want to make this introduction too long and I still have to cover ideologies. So let's dive into that. I'll try to breeze through it and then we'll get uh, moving. So I've put in several Star Wars themed ideologies here, but the two main ones that we're concerned about are going to be the Jedi Order, which is the one that of course all of our Force sensitives are following at the moment. It's collectivist. We have a natural connection, primarily through Basana in this case. Exalted priesthood means that the leader is also going to be espousing our Jedi faith and not just uh, kind of issuing orders. And finally, we revere elders because, of course, the Jedi hold the, the ancient masters up above everybody else. We worship the Force, or I guess more specifically the light side of the Force. And then as far as the precepts are concerned, we have a strong Anima Nexus connection, again, mostly through Basana. We abhor violence, so that's going to be 
um, probably the most tangible of a lot of these because we cannot be the aggressor or people will be very upset. As you can see, they're a minus 30 moodlet if we are the ones who initiate the attack. Now, if we're being raided, we can, of course, defend ourselves, but we can't openly attack non-hostile targets without incurring major, major penalties. And then, of course, physical love is prohibited. The Jedi don't uh, think too kindly on that. As far as drug use goes, only medicine. We like trees and nature. Um, we respect elders. They don't care about insect meat. Um, again, our leader is a moralist, uh, so they can preach. What else? Um, overall, they're they're pretty attuned to tough situations. So pain, not a big deal. Extremes of temperature, not really a big deal. Having to rough it for a little bit, they don't really care. As far as labor goes, though, not super keen. So they are not happy to do dumb labor at all. And when they have to do skilled labor, they're a little bit lackadaisical about it. More uh, than any sort of work, they're interested in meditation. So they basically always want to be meditating. We can put them to work. They're just going to be a little bit unmotivated to do it. Uh, the rest of these I'm not going to go through. We're basically playing a lawful good faction. You can pretty much assume uh, what that will look like here. So as far as roles are concerned, we have three. Our leader is going to be a Jedi Master, uh, not a Grand Master, because we are still sort of subservient to the Jedi Order. We're just a little sect that is off setting up a new temple on a distant planet, but we still ultimately answer to the, the actual Jedi Council. Our Moral Guide is going to be a Jedi Consular. They're just kind of making sure everybody keeps up the faith and whatnot. And then because of our... Uh, our tree connection up here, we do get a plant specialist. More than likely, that's going to be Basana, and so that title is going to be a Jedi Keeper. They're going to be in charge of sort of keeping the anima trees. I say trees because the the dryad trees are reskinned with a mod I have to make them anima nexus trees. Uh, so they're all effectively anima related now. We only have one ritual, and that's going to be a funeral, so there's not a whole lot of partying happening with the Jedi. Got some buildings and whatnot, um, and then our relics are going to be these three holocrons. So we're going to have to find some holocrons across the planet, and of course we hold up melee combat as the the most noble form, and uh, we despise the the very uncivilized range combat. Um, hopefully that doesn't count for using force powers, but I, I suppose we'll see. Now, the reason I wanted to involve more anima stuff is because if you've ever used the, the Force mod, um, you'll know that the dark side and the light side of the Force each get like four or five powers, and then there's, I think, like four or five neutral ones that are more just generic, like Force speed type of stuff. And so it doesn't leave a lot of room for specialization in our Force characters. If you're a Jedi, you really only have access to maybe eight different abilities. So I wanted to use side casts to kind of round these characters out and give them a little bit more personality in their abilities. And I thought um, meditating and communing with anima trees would be a cool way for a Jedi to do that. So the other faith or the other ideology we're going to be running in this colony is going to be the Galactic Republic. We'll call it a culture. And of course, both Theo and Arena are going to be followers of the Galactic Republic culture. So it's a republic, of course. And it's more or less egalitarian. These things are probably not worth going into in very much depth. Um, they're just a more neutral good faction. So take from that what you will. Uh, the most important one just being that they do have three leaders rather than one. They do like having power. Unlike the Jedi who are kind of detached from that sort of stuff. These guys are going to be a little bit more motivated to have those important roles. So we got to be careful who we give it to. And then they don't outright abhor violence, but they do disapprove of it. So they don't want to be attacking uh, non-hostile, innocent people. They're not going to be very happy if they do. But it's not like the Jedi where they'll just be outright uh, pandemonium over it. And then they require 
having a hospital built. Um, once we hit, I think, medium expectations, we're going to have to have a hospital or people are going to be a little bit concerned about how things are going. The rest of this, again, uh, just assume neutral good and you're probably pretty spot on. It looks like it reset all of these, so I'm going to have to go through with the dev tools and fix them. But again, just kind of the, the short version is we have three leaders. I'm basically going to have one overall leader, sort of like a governor. These two are going to be more specialized. Um, not that their roles give them any sort of specialization, but for role play purposes, I'll have one representing the military and one representing sort of the economic sector, crafters, whatever. And then the moral guide is going to be more of like a, uh, like a counselor or a shrink in this case. I'll see about adding maybe one more ritual here. I think we'll do an annual festival of some kind, uh, whether it be like a, a not Christmas equivalent or something of that nature. And then we'll have another social festival that we can throw whenever we want just to celebrate events that happen more naturally throughout the game. Um, and as far as relics go, I'll, I'll tweak those or maybe just get rid of them entirely. So that is the Galactic Republic culture. There's also a Sith Empire culture that's going to be practiced by the Sith Empire. Go figure. Um, it's exactly what you'd expect. Chaotic evil. So they're supremacists. They're xenophobes. They're very aristocratic. So you definitely want to be on top. And if you are anybody in this culture, then you are not doing your own work. You have slaves for that. And then finally, it's a blood court. So they're going to be basically fighting for that top spot. Precepts are, again, more or less what you'd expect. Slavery, good. Torture, good. Labor and hard work, bad. Um, power, good. Violence, good. Yeah. Oh, we don't like old people or aliens. So, it looks like it changed these roles as well. I'm going to go back and fix the names. The leader is going to be a Sith Lord. Um, I probably won't go as far as a Dark Lord because, again, this is just kind of like a a small faction within a larger faction being represented. Uh, the moral guide will be a Sith Inquisitor. That one's pretty straightforward. Melee specialist will be like a Sith warrior. And then the shooting specialist can be like a commander or something. Uh, we're not going to be playing as the, as anybody with this culture, or at least not like actively practicing it. So uh, the rituals probably don't matter, but that one is of course required and then i might change their relics to be some sith holocrons just to be in line with the jedi i've also gone through and i'm not going to cover these in any depth whatsoever but i did make sort of like tribalistic cultures for a lot of the factions added by the star wars alien races mod so the twi'lek or twi'lek have their own tribalist uh culture here the trandoshans have their own that's a little bit more like uh militaristic hunter-ish these guys are like big on slavery and cannibal. Well, not cannibalism, but they like to eat uh, humans and whatnot. These guys like to hunt people and raid them. Uh, scum and villainy, they just like money and don't really have any morals whatsoever. The Zabrak are kind of like a weird... Uh, there's, they're as close to the Zabrak as I could get. They're just kind of like a weird occult thing. Um... And I thought there was one more, but I suppose not. Um, who are you guys? The Huts. Oh, the these guys should probably have the Scum and Villainy one as well, but whatever. Anyways, those are the ideologies we're going to be playing around with. And for reference, this is what our world looks like. Just one relatively small continent here. Uh, we are on the southern coast down here. In this poison forest, which I've actually made not so poisonous, just so we could get a more diverse biome for this playthrough. Um, now, the Galactic Republic is actively at war with the Sith Empire, and we are as well for that matter. I believe we already have relatively positive relations with the... No, we're neutral. Or at least we are with that specific outpost um i think we might have positive relations with the overall faction but i could be wrong i don't remember if that represents all of them or just this specific one and uh, i believe this scum and villainy group is always hostile there's probably at least two other factions that are going to be attacking us i think the zabrak and the uh they're also neutral 
Hmm. Let's see. Neutral. These guys are also neutral. Okay, so other than the Empire, we're not going to be seeing a lot of raids. To that end, I might go into the dev tools and make a few other factions mad at us just for some variety. But we'll see. Um, so that's our world. Now then, this is the seed that we're playing on. I rerolled this a few times to get the anima tree in a place I didn't hate. So it's right here, um, just below this sort of mountain blocking off the northern half of the map, or the northern edge at least. And my thoughts are we're basically going to start by building a Jedi temple around this anima tree. I have a mod that alleviates most of the penalties for building near anima trees. So as long as we're not building in this growing area, we don't really see any impact. So we're probably going to build like a courtyard around it like this, um, where we can get the anima nexus trees in as well and have some room for their stuff to grow. Uh, and then the Jedi temple is basically just going to be maybe not a rectangle necessarily, but uh, wrapped around it if you will. So let's see. Um, we're going to want to set up, uh, God, I haven't played this game in legit like two years. So please bear with me here. Actually, let's do a dumping zone. Um, and we'll try to get, let's start over here. I think we'll do that. And I think we'll build a roof area over this just to keep our stuff from from what's it called uh going bad or whatever from deteriorating uh i might need to get a column in there i believe we can go seven without so i we probably need like a column here and here just to be safe uh can we build anything right out of the gate here we have some wood so once we get the wood in the stockpile we can throw down a column or two might be better to build it like here that might cover us in all directions again we get like seven tiles from any support so i think that'll be okay uh let's see is everything oh, i'll just go here and where is it allow everything anything else that we want to set up beforehand you're still drafted uh, by the way, Jaina does not have a lightsaber yet. So I think, yeah, she has a, a stun baton that she stole off one of her captors. Uh, Theo has a DC-15A rifle. You saw Erina's little carbine there. Wade has a blue lightsaber. Fasana has a yellow one. I'm going to do my best to keep every Jedi with a unique color just so they're a little bit easier to keep track of in combat but uh at some point we probably will need to overlap and then i'm thinking so the jedi are not going to be too keen on me using or cutting down trees to build with so to that end let's go to production and i think we're immediately going to set up a stone cutters table we can even build it out of i should have a little bit of wood that we spawned with so let's use that and we'll put it in the back here Oh, well, crap. I can build it there. Okay. So we'll get this stonecutter's table set up and immediately start processing some of these chunks. So, you know what? Actually, to that end, um, let me do one last quick little thing here. I would like to turn this into a stockpile specifically for chunks. Um... Let's just do stone chunks. I don't want slag yet. And that's just going to have everything else minus chunks. Wait a minute. Why does this not have... No, I don't want corpses. <laughs> um, is that because I... Yeah, I picked dumping. Damn it. Um, I want raw resources. Items. I, let's start with that. Okay, ready, go. So we are off. 
Um, what are you guys going to do? Are you going to haul some stuff? Cool. So Wade is, uh, please don't do that, buddy. I'm going to ask you to maybe build this first. Can I not? Let's cancel the roof then. Just for the time being, because I really don't want him to basically kill himself right out of the gate with a roof. That would be really unfortunate. We'll get this column in first, and I really should measure this space, but I'm pretty sure it's close enough. Okay, cool. So she's already got the wood down. Wade is hauling steel on over. Once he gets it there, we'll go ahead and have him build it, and then we can get the roof over. I guess while we wait for them to do that, I'm going to... Where is my planning zone? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's Well, that's fine because it's seven this way as well. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we can build out to like here. Uh, you shouldn't be trying to convert people. So that's something I might need to tweak. I'll go into the um, the ideology and make sure that people aren't like actively preaching all the time. We basically only want to be recruiting prisoners. We don't need to be recruiting each other within the same faith or within the same colony. That's kind of ridiculous. Okay, so let's get that roof area up now. Again, we can basically go... Like this should be fine in every direction. And I think it's a circle from there. But again, with all of the mountain here, it's not really a concern. Um, we should be able to build out to here without any problems. I think we're safe this way as well. That corner might be an issue. So let's play it safe and build it more like this. Actually... I think that's probably fine. Okay, and then we can go a little bit further out this way. Actually, I think that might be okay. And we don't need this. All right, so we have a roof. Let's start with um, what kind of stone do we have kicking around here? So Aurelian stone chunks seem to be the most plentiful followed by limestone to that end stone chunks let's focus on those two specifically actually you know what let's focus on limestone specifically because i think i want to use limestone as my main building material and we're going to make limestone blocks forever and I'd like for Wade to be the one to do that because he does have some passion for crafting. In fact, he has a lot of passion for crafting. And so that's going to really help him develop his force abilities. So even though these are established Jedi characters, um, we still have to go through this and we'll still have to level them through the process. But hopefully they'll pick it up a little bit faster than, say, Jaina will. Uh, so he's meditating right now. That's another thing we want to consider is here's our anima tree. What's, what's the deal here? Disabled needs a colonist with the natural meditation focus type who is below maximum psi-link level and not psychically deaf. Uh, so why is she not qualified for that? Did it change her bio? She's a tribe child, so she should have the natural meditation thing. And then I thought... Our ideology kind of overrode that as well. Hmm. Um, 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 um. Begin link, need natural psi link focus type. Yeah, so it was my impression that the tribe child gave her that. Uh, why is nothing working? Well, let's worry about that later. I can play around with it off camera. For now, let's just try to get this place up and running. Um, another thing I forgot to put in here is foods. Uh, we do have packaged survival meals that we want to get under a roof. Oh, and medicine. Right. Uh, 
Where is that? Isn't it under items? Is medicine not an item? Hmm. Oh, probably manufactured. Well, we'll just we'll just check that one and see what happens. What are you doing right now, Bastina? Just wandering. Yeah, could you maybe start? Oh, Jane is working on that one. She's doing on that one too. Well, it looks like between Jaina and Jaina and Theo, they're gonna get all these. So, oh right, we have components as well. Yeah, we wanna make sure we have all those. Right. So this anima tree, it's actually really hard to spot in, on this map. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to pause it really briefly here. We'll get to our planning tool. I'm thinking we'll have basically like three wide walkways right along the edge of this in either direction. And I don't know how far we'll take that. It really depends on how much space we need for the other trees. But that'll wrap around the courtyard. We'll have a little walkway. And we can even like maybe put some... Uh, linked pathways through there if we need to. In fact, um, actually, no, no, because we need this. So I was going to say the floors don't count against any sort of penalty for the anima tree, but we do want to keep this space open for the grass, so I can't build through there with floors, even though it wouldn't hurt me in any um, statistical capacity. I just need that space for grass. So yeah, we would only probably build it here, um, but we'll see, it might just wrap around. So that means that for the first wall of the building, it would be here. So that's probably where we'll start our construction is in this area. And we can push it like all the way to the mountain here, maybe even into the mountain a bit. I don't wanna make another mountain base. I, I make too many mountain bases, but if, if we have to dig into it a little bit, that's, I'm not going to count that. But what I'm, I'm thinking is we'll have some sort of entry exit to the courtyard here. And then um, probably a hall that goes around the entire building. And just like a series of bedrooms all along those hallways, all the way around. And then maybe hereabouts, I want to have two large rooms one for gatherings and one for training so i might put those on the back end here and have the bedrooms on the sides and potentially like along the front as well so that's kind of the idea but for now we'll probably just set up living areas in here that might be the easiest thing to do we actually didn't roof off that whole thing what's happening with the weather spores Hmm, that's concerning. I thought I'd turn that off too. <laughs> I guess not. Uh, let's get that built. And that should hopefully protect us from the spores. It may not because we're technically still outdoors. Oh, wow. Oh, that's silver. I thought those were limestone blocks. And then we'll probably throw down sleeping spots in here for a while. Uh, it's obviously not ideal but uh sometimes you got to do what you got to do so wade what are you working on right now building a roof okay because you are going to be the only person really capable of building us or getting us the material that we need so i kind of need you to be a little bit more productive it looks like erina is actually the one doing it um She's not bad at crafting by any means. In fact, I thought she had some passion for it. Something happened and my game got all tweaked. A lot of things are not how I set them up. Anyways, Wade should really be the one doing it though because he has a bunch of passion for it and it's going to make him level up his force abilities that much faster. So I might go into this and say specifically Wade should be doing that and so Erina will finish this one but she shouldn't continue beyond that one so we just cut down a tree and 
Let's see. Yeah, trees disturbed. So we did take a slight hit there. But the fact that there's so many other trees around really offsets it. But I think we have enough wood now to get some proper walls down. So I'm just going to use the vanilla walls for this, but uh, I don't plan on using them for much. But they are cheap in this case. So let's build it out to here. That's going to take 45. Uh, we do have a couple of stacks, so I think we'll be okay. And then what we can do is build this out and around to there. And we'll throw down a one by one door. I think most of our city is going to be built with these... Um, these Star Wars walls because you know why not stay on brand and there should be some matching doors as well that we'll need to research but uh, I think these limestone clean brick walls will be what most of our city is built out of or at least maybe the Jedi Temple and we can mix things up for the city itself but I do want to get this space enclosed just because I'm not sure if those spores are actually going to start causing problems or not. So better safe than sorry in this case. And we'll build it, uh, build the roof out a little bit to match where those walls go. And then this will just be our little staging area as we start building up over here. Now, one thing that we're really going to struggle with is... Uh, crafting materials that aren't just like wood and steel so uh, for example if we want to make like nice beds let's see uh, actually we can just make wooden beds or limestone beds I forgot we didn't need any cloth for that but we might need cloth for other things actually I think it's mostly just gonna be clothes so to that extent um, We will want to potentially tame some animals, but most of what we're going to see on this map is actually like butterflies and rats, apparently. So when we see traders, it's going to be really important to try to barter for some uh, pack animals or like livestock. Especially, I, I'll try to keep them to Star Wars uh, animals. So if we can get like a bantha or I, I'm not sure what other like uh bovine type uh, things are in that mod but we'll we'll try to stick to those all right so people are starting to wake up and wade is working on our walls um so i am not going to be letting the pawns choose their own look um I really don't like this as a mechanic. I will probably try to find a way to remove it if possible. Um, otherwise, they're just going to have to be upset about it. Uh, so I am running Dub's Bad Hygiene. What in the hell is that? Okay. Uh, well, it's nice to have a little bit of light in there, I guess. Anyway, um, we're running Dub's Bad Hygiene, so... We also need to get a well built so people can, you know, bathe themselves. We're, we don't need drinking water, but we do need uh, a, a source of water for bathing and whatnot. And then we also need a latrine. So that's what I'm building in this little nook over here. Uh, we'll put a little gate on it and then have the latrine itself back there. Now, I like Dove's Bad Hygiene because it, it does add a little bit of extra complexity to building a colony. But it also... Um, is like an infinite source of chem fuel because you can just turn people's poo into uh, into fuel. Yeah, so it, it's kind of nice for that reason. Um, so in some ways it makes it harder, but in some ways it makes it easier. And so yeah, now they can use the restroom and it looks like uh, Wade's going to be the first one to test it. And then he's going to get back to making us some more stone blocks. Um, again, so we're going to be building over here. Uh, I'm not going to really put any more effort into this than is just basically exactly what they need to survive and nothing more, nothing less. We are going to want to prioritize food very, very quickly here. So what I may do is, um, let's see... But we'll need to cut some plants down in... We'll just do it right outside here. So 
let's say an area about yay big we'll get all those cut down and then we'll turn that into a growing area um, I'll probably do I, I didn't make that any specific size which I probably should have but uh, expand that out and then I might go one more this way that's fine we'll just do these and just to make sure that that doesn't merge with the other one okay so before they start planting anything I want one of these to be rice that's gonna be our primary food source for the time being the other one is going to be what is fiber corn can that be eaten no would like substance right uh, okay what's golden grass do anything just looks nice grows anywhere there's a little light and minimally fertile ground okay that's, that's great I guess so we have Nutrifungus, is that also edible? Only in darkness, right? Corn. I might go double grass right now. Or sorry, double rice. Potato is what? 5.8? Yeah, this is like half the time, so Right now, I think speed is the most important thing. Um, we're also gonna want some heel root, probably. So let's get those planted. So I am uh, at least kind of planning or starting to zone this area above the anima tree where we're gonna start building. But it looks like there is considerable space that we're gonna need to terraform. So all of this green stuff here is, what is it? Just marshy soil, yeah. So. I'm going to build some stony soil over it that should let us actually put down proper walls. Uh, unfortunately, there is going to be quite a lot of it in this area from the looks of things. So that whole space there, and then it looks like over here as well, um, into this area. And basically anywhere you see green, there's a good chance that we're going to need to terraform it. So I know it seems a little bit weird to... Uh, build a nutrient paste dispenser in uh, our little dirt shack here. But um, the nutrient paste dispenser is going to be critical for us because we do not have the ability to cook at all, really. And we are basically going to want the most efficient food source possible, which is going to be nu nutrient paste. Um, yeah, unfortunately... Yeah, I wonder if it makes more sense. The thing is we don't have time to really wait to build it over here. We kind of need it now. So I think what I'll do is actually build it into the wall here. And we'll build a cooler area back here. That will, of course, require a bit of electricity. But we do have some, some very basic... Um, sources of power right now i thought we had solar but i guess we only have wind but even wind is better than nothing so if we can get one of those and then get a um a cooler down that will be enough for the time being we just need to make sure that we have somewhere to put food so i'm actually going to deconstruct these um i can reinstall walls that's interesting I was not aware that that was a thing. So that's really handy, actually. Uh, okay, and then we'll build a copy. Uh, let's build out to here. And I think it's only going to be accessible from the outside, just for now. Cool, that was like super convenient, actually. Um, you know what? 
rather than that's going to be the wall okay don't build a wall there instead build me a cooler unit on top of the wall okay fine i see how it is build that there and you know what that's probably not a great place for it anyways so where is the damn you know you guys keep working while i figure this out nutrient paste dispenser we'll plug it in right there We are going to need hoppers as well, which require steel. Um, I mean, what, what one? You know what? If these butterflies are going to come in here, then we're going to hunt them. It's insect meat, not necessarily what we want to be using, but we got to eat what we got to eat. In fact, it looks like somebody may have eaten raw insect meat. Uh, we have survival meals left. I just, I'd prefer to deal with this before we run out. And let's see, cooler, 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 temperature, there we go. We'll build it right here. And then, of course, we need a power source. So uh, where is my electricity? I had it open just a moment ago. There we go, power. So wind turbine is going to be the choice right now. It's the only choice. Where can I actually build it, though? Let's just throw it down there and then we'll build a conduit straight back and over. Uh, we'll build it down to here just so we hit both of those. Let's chop that down. We got to watch the friendly fire in there. Jesus. Who's about to break? Wade? Um, why are you not selected? Needs. Oh, he's really not happy about the trees, right? And then the recreation, which he's working on right now. He's building a chess table. So the moment he's done with that, hopefully he can sit down and maybe play a game or two. But yeah, we need to stop cutting down trees. It's going to be really hard, actually, because we, we need to clear space. Uh, when you're done with that, come finish this. Because that is our only source of recreation. I should have started with the horseshoe pin, but I figured, hey, a chess table would be nice. That seems like an absurd amount of work, but I guess it is helping him level up, so I shouldn't complain. How tired are you right now? needs you're more recreation starved than sleep starved so why don't you come play with some recreation can i force that no i can't well maybe when he wakes up cool so he's got a meteorite full of gold that's pretty handy um i mean obviously gold's pretty valuable but there's also a lot of things we'll need it for for crafting uh, i should check on the animal situation here Nothing new, just a bunch of rats. I think we killed all the butterflies, actually. So Wade's doing a lot better now that he's had a chance to blow off some steam with recreation. But we really do need to be careful about the tree situation. Cool. So he's going to knock out the nutrient paste dispenser right now. And then we just need to finish enclosing this. Why the hell is that so damaged? Did he just do that poor job? Uh, can you repair that, please? I wonder if it got shot a few times while we were quote unquote hunting. Okay, that just needs to. Can you actually do that? Because that's kind of critical to our whole operation here. And it's honestly not a lot of work. Uh, Erina is not doing her job because why? I don't know. Not sure. Oh, absent minded. 
That would do it. Is there not any wind here? Are you kidding me? Information. Okay, that's unfortunate. Two people have the plague. Wow. They're uh, going pretty hard on me here. Right out of the gate, too. Okay, so you're getting full medicine. Yeah, go lay down. Bastion's going to have to treat you. Can we please have a little bit of wind? Like, just a tiny bit? Uh, short of that, <laughs> we can start burning wood, but people are going to be more pissed if we have to start chopping down trees for that. Um, I guess we'll put one here. I don't have enough steel, but we can mine some steel relatively easily. Uh, there was some around, actually. Yeah, right there. So... How much wood do we have? Not a lot. Not enough to keep us fueled up. Hmm. This is where a solar panel would be really valuable. Research is going to be tricky as well because we don't have anybody who's super skilled at it. Um, why am I zooming around here? So solar, what do we need to do to make that happen? Um, that's actually pretty easy to knock out. It might be worth doing just so we're not about to die. It looks like we're out of cooked food. So, um, this was supposed to be our saving grace, but the electricity is nowhere to be found. So yeah, let's do as a little bit more long-term solution. Is that under production? It's been so long, I don't remember. Yeah. We'll build it out of wood. Um, ba, 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 ba. How about over here? And I don't want to waste any. St I probably shouldn't have made these out of stool, but I, excuse me, I probably shouldn't have made these stools out of steel. Uh, but I figured we would just keep them long term, so it wasn't a big deal. But uh, kind of regretting that now. Well, I can make them out of wood, I suppose. Let's see. We do want somewhere for them to sit, though. You know what? Let's do a chair. Why not a chair? Um, we'll see what it looks like with our, our style or whatever. So, yeah. We need that so that we can research the solar panel, which will be a more reliable source of electricity. There's just apparently zero wind on this. And I don't know what that is. You guys need to be treated sooner than later. It looks like you already did treat her. How are we doing? Um, 3.7 immunity is 3. So let's keep an eye on that. We do have high quality medicine at least. And a, a decent doctor. So hopefully they'll be okay. Obviously our treating area is not ideal. But it is what it is. God, please, just a little bit of wind. Just a tiny bit. That's all we need. Now, fortunately, our Jedi are going to be more or less content with eating raw food. Um, they're used to living rough. But it's obviously not something that we want to make them do all the time. And there's a high potential for people to get sick and whatnot. The two Republic characters are not going to be okay with that. The Force Awakens. Cool, Wade. So Wade is our first uh, Jedi to awaken his powers. And let's see. So do we get to spend a point? Yeah, we do. So as I mentioned, each alignment has five abilities available. And I guess there was only three neutral ones. So push, pull, and speed. And then if we're light side aligned, we have access to these five. Dark side has access to these. And then we can also buff our um, lightsaber abilities. So, obviously with Wade being a guardian, he's going to be more combat oriented. Basana is 
probably going to go hard into the heal abilities and probably like mind tricks as well. Things that are less direct than, you know, I throw you around with the force type of thing. Um, I think a pull is probably a better a better ability initially because he is, again, very melee combat oriented. So if we can get dangerous range threats into melee with him where they are less of a threat, that's probably better than pushing people away because he doesn't have a range weapon. So if he, if he throws somebody away, then he has to basically go run and catch them to fight them. So I think force pull is where we'll start. And I think Bassana will go force heal or heal other, I suppose. Okay, we have this. Let's go ahead and set up our research. We want to focus on solar panels first and foremost. And we'll probably transition all of our power to, to solar. In fact, this was just an absolute waste because it's not going to do anything. I guess in the meantime, we have to... Oh, I just exited out of my game. We have to build that um, wood fire generator. There's, just, there's no other way to get around it. And in order to do that, we will need to mine a bit. So let's knock those out. We might need to prioritize that. If we get this down, we can burn a bit of wood to get this going long enough to feed a few people. Now, they're not going to starve. There is food around. It's just not food that we necessarily want to be eating. Ooh. Ibex dough wanders in. How many? Just the one? Are you carrying anything? You are. Hmm. Glitter world medicine, too. Uh, If I kill it, it's going to drop all that, right? I sure hope so. We're going to kill it for food and for the things it's carrying. All right, so it looks like we'll be here for a while. Um, what do we want to call this place? I don't know. League of No. What should our faction be called? Hmm. Right now, I'm just going to call the settlement Jedi Temple, since we are the only Jedi presence here. I am more than happy to take input for names from you guys, and I can use the dev tools to um, go back and change them. As far as what our faction should be called, uh, we're just going to be Jedi, since again, there's no other Jedi here. There are other Republic forces, but not any Jedi. So I'm going to go with something super generic for now. Please feel free to uh, spice that up a little bit with some suggestions in the comments and whatever... Uh, sounds best will uh, get retroactively input. Uh, so he's still terraforming, but that's not really a high priority right now. What are you doing now? Repairing the wooden column. Can we maybe like build things that need to be built? That would be fantastic. Um, can you mine? I don't know of anybody else that's going to mine. Um, Dio was supposed to be able to do that, but he's not able to do it for whatever reason again something weird with his traits that i need to go back and fix the same thing with erina she she should at least be capable i don't know why she's not um but i mean these two are bedridden so we're not getting a, getting a lot done here because we have two people not doing anything and then two people who are um plague ridden i mean they're, they're gonna survive the immunity is already well well ahead of the actual infection or at least for Jaina it is but I mean 29 is still a pretty good lead over 21 point being uh, two people <laughs> laying in bed doing nothing and then two people just kind of wandering around doing nothing not super productive and then the one guy who is working is a Jedi who doesn't work as fast as uh, other people would work typically so I'm going to have to basically manually tell him to dig these out until he has enough to build the chem fuel generator 
and then hopefully, ah, uh, come on, stop converting people. It, I'm honestly not that concerned about somebody changing ideologies, though it would be weird. I'm more concerned with the fact that they resent the attempt every time, and that's going to create a lot of hostility within the colony. Jaina is on the verge of a break risk because of the trees. Everybody's upset about the trees. Man, do I regret choosing that. <laughs> All right, Wade. That's probably going to be enough steel once you're done with that one. Looks like your buddy Theo is at least willing to haul. That's nice. So go ahead and... Uh, well, I guess... Um, where the hell are you again? There you are. Yeah, keep digging until he gets that back into the stockpile because otherwise it's not going to let me prioritize it. So there's the Ibex doe. Where did it get killed though? Ah, oh, crap. I wish I had paid more attention to that because somewhere there's plasteel and components and Glitter World medicine lying on the ground. Okay, Dana's in it. <laughs> Dana's in a jays. Uh, Jaina is in a daze. Um, I don't think it'll matter too much because she's supposed to be bedridden anyways, right? So it's, it's not like we lost out on any work from her. I'll keep an eye out for Glitter World Medicine here. Hopefully it gets hauled to us. Uh, Wade, stop what you're doing. And yeah, rather than doing that, build this. The moment that's built, we can throw some wood in there and we're... Oh God, Are they going to be upset about that too? Yeah, I mean, it's only a minus two. I'm not going to give them any opportunity to choose their own look. I spent too much time customizing these guys to let them randomize all their shit. Okay, we have this. Please, for the love of God, throw some wood in there. All right. Now you guys can eat. This is already broken? Wow. You know, just tear it down. What a waste that was. Yeah, so he just got sick from eating raw bug meat. And Erna is due for another plague treatment. Well, I think we'll go ahead and call it there. It's been a little bit of a rough start, but we were kind of expecting that. Though I, I thought we would be able to get a decent food supply sooner than we did. Um, I, I wasn't prepared for the wind turbine to be completely useless. That really hurt us. Um, this is not the best solution, but we we can source wood if we need to. Like, we, we do have a little bit, and um, there's obviously plenty of trees. We just get very upset every time they get cut down. So we want to avoid that where we can. Solar is obviously the answer to that problem, but as you may have noticed, the research bench remains empty because none of these characters are particularly interested in doing intellectual work. Uh, she is probably the only one inclined to do it, but uh, Basna is one of the few characters actually pulling her weight uh, through, you know, the planting and obviously tending to the sick. But maybe we can convince her to do a bit of research when she's not busy helping everybody else survive. What is her current priority for research? Oh, it's not even on there, so let's set it to three. And the only other thing at three is animal handling. There's no animals around, so that's fine. So cooking, growing, and plant cutting. We're not going to be doing any cooking, so let's drop that to four. So basically, tending to the crops is the only thing that will take priority over her research. And, and of course, doctoring is uh, tier one. But other than that, everything looks to be good. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it there for now. And I'll let this run a little bit off camera to see if we can just kind of stabilize things in terms of food. Obviously, uh, rice harvest would really, really help in that regard. And we're a couple days out from that. 
And in the meantime, if Wade isn't super, super busy with everything else, I'll try to continue working on this structure over here just so we can eventually move into a little bit more permanent uh, digs. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you're excited about this series. I am definitely excited about getting back to RimWorld. And uh, I didn't think I'd be so um, motivated to do something Star Wars, but I, I do like what this uh, series potentially has in store for us. So with that, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.